Fire Emblem Engage released a year ago to the day. And while I'm currently working on a few bigger videos regarding this game, because I've kind of put around 400 plus hours into it, so I'm quite excited to talk about it, but I haven't done a lot of content on it. So if you're interested in seeing more Engage content right off the bat, hit that subscribe button to let me know. But with that being said, I still wanted to do a video to commemorate its one year anniversary. So in the most YouTuber fashion ever, today I'm making a tier list ranking all of FE17's characters because that's what YouTubers do. We, we, we make lists. I don't know why. Jokes aside, one of the driving factor behind this is because my current engaged tier list on this channel is yeah pretty bad and that's mostly due to the fact that i did it right after i was done with my first playthrough of the game not having played every character not having enough hours only having played on hard mode it's 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 pretty mediocre but today i want to take a minute to update it make it better make it cleaner but for now enough chit chat let's get into ranking some units so here before you is the tier list, but before we fully get into it, let's just set some parameters, some ground rules, the lens through which we'll look at this tier list. So the angle I'm using to approach this is looking at the best units for maddening based on my own perception of these characters after having played the game through three to four times about. This is going to be targeting people mostly doing their first, second, or even third playthrough of maddening. I most likely won't get in the weeds of all the best possible builds for every character, but I'll be relaying what I believe are some of the best ways to handle each characters while I analyze them and tier list them. I will also not be ranking the DLC characters and that's simply because I haven't used them out of the post game so I haven't used them in a regular playthrough and since the scope of this tier list is to look at the characters and how they perform in the main game main playthrough and the paralogs and all that stuff if I haven't used them which I haven't with the DLC characters I don't want to get too much into it all right now we're ready to go let's start this tier list and here are what each of these tiers will mean s tier is simply the goats so this tier is going to contain not a ton of characters but a couple that i think are if you want an easier time through maddening you have to use these characters they're just going to be the top tier units that are just like easy to use very simple straightforward strategies you know the goats a tier will be you know some of the best other units some of the you know units that you you would want to gravitate towards so we're going to call this top tier right below the goats b tier it's going to be the the good units just 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 good i think good's good enough for good you know they're good they can be used they're not going to be probably your first or second choice but if you have some slots to fill or if you want to just do something different a little bit without putting too much hamper on your playthrough go with those units they'll do okay they'll figure out they have a role they have they have something to do with you know and or some of them might be just units that can be really good but like they require some shenanigans or some finagling to get there c tier will be your mid mid units so units that are like eh, yeah i'd rather not use them but you know if you want to make your they can either have like a very specific niche or if you want to make your life a little harder you can use them but I would not recommend those units to like be the first one you go to. Uh, D tier, the bad units. The ones, I mean, to be fair, I don't think there's a lot of bad units in Engage. I think Engage is a pretty well balanced game because of all the reclassing you can do, the skills, the rings. Every character can find a way to be good. But since my experience with Engage, well, while being pretty good, almost 400 plus hours in the game, might be more limited than people who have spent way more hours than me in the game. There are some units I still haven't managed to make work or have had like a consistency with. So I'm going to classify them as bad. If your favorite's in there, I apologize. You can scream at me in the comments if you want. But it is what it is. Sometimes there are some units that will perform less than stellar compared to others. And F tier, of course, you're, we're skipping E. I don't know the alphabet correctly. Is your trash tier. There's a unit that I'm like, I can put this stuff in the garbage we don't need to talk about them we don't need to see them i don't like them uh in any way shape or form i don't even think there's a redeeming build for them even though again previously what i've just said is probably every unit is usable but you know i still believe that some units will find themselves in the trash tier all right let's start ranking some units and for some quality control right off the bat in the goats we're gonna be placed in sami and you may be wondering why he's not a unit you can use no but he's cute as hell that motherfucker 
cute as heck. So Sami sets the standard for what S tier means. <laughs> but jokes aside, let's get into ranking real units. And off the bat, we start, by the way, this is in no particular order. This is just what tier list maker gave me. We will be starting with Kagetsu. Kagetsu is a super interesting unit because he joins at a very important time. Second pre-promote in the game to join. However, he is busted as hell. Kagetsu has some of the best growths in the game, has some of the best base stats in the game right off the bat. And he's just a really good unit. Even in his base class, Sword Master, you can make him work. But he does have a lower ish strength growth all his other growth base are like really good he has 40 in in defense he has 50 in both dex and speed his only real weakness outside of magic and res but that's not kind of not what you're using him for r is 30 percent strength growth but with all the reclassing you can do and engage using the very good growth bases he has you can easily recla reclass him without breaking a sweat without thinking too much about it so i think it gets to for me i haven't used him in every single playthrough i've done but i've used him in two of them and every time he's just an absolute monster whether it's in as a sword master or anything else he kind of synergizes with, well with anything that will give him like more damage for example anything that will give him more strength to help his bad you know 10 base and well bad mediocre 10 base and mediocre strength growth or you know re reclass him or you know give him true damage through erica's ring whichever it is kagetsu for me is an s tier unit he kind of dominates the game he's kind of one of the i don't know if i'd say best unit but one of the best in my opinion all right moving on to amber amber i personally like a lot i won't say he's one of the best units in the game but he has pretty good strength growth and base with 15 base and 45 growth i've enjoyed amber the few times i've used him i haven't really used him in his starting class i always tend to reclass him as an albertier to get like a little bit more out of that strength growth bring him to like up to 60 percent with the 15 percent from the albertier his dex and speed growth are on the lowest side so that usually helps so he, he has some lacks here and there in terms of you know speed doubling and stuff like that he will hit really hard synergizes very well with lin as do most units with lowish speed and dex i think he can be good i think you can you can slot him in pretty easily in, in in a in a team as kind of like a second string unit if you have some slots open you can kind of like fill it up with amber if you've trained him from the start because you forgot to trade him then you won't catch up forget about it but i think amber is a good definition of a b tier unit next up we have movier who while i really do tend to enjoy i think he's he has okay growths he has pretty good bases and his personal skill contemplative is really good to use him as kind of like a late game tank he does however join the game very late so he can kind of act act as a filler unit in the later stages of the game because the moment you get him and veil vale, you do have more spots on your team available at that point in the game which means that mavier kind of finds himself usually in my teams not by the fact that he's better than a lot of other units but because at that point you've probably in maddening mostly trained your core team and then the two more slots open you don't really have anybody that can slot in there well without investments usually that is sometimes you may have that unit at the ready i usually don't find myself having that unit so mavier usually finds himself on my team he's an okay unit i don't think he's like the best or the worst i think he performs really well in the late game he will not kind of like become one of your carries but he'll fill in that slot really well help out in terms of healing doing some chip damage uh maybe sometimes finishing important kills i think mavier is uh, really good in his base class of Royal Knight, but I've also used him as a Sage, reclassing him late in the game. I know weird, but it actually has worked, synergizing really well with Celica. So I'd say that Mavier hits the top tier for me simply because his availability is so good within how the scope of the game works that when you're at that point when he joins, you have that extra slot and you're like, oh, I don't really know what to do with it. Might as well use this really okay or more than okay unit they give us. He kind of finds himself in that spot where he benefits from, from circumstances. So I'll put him in A tier. He usually finds himself in my teams. It's not because I love him more than other units. I think he's actually a very interesting unit though, but I, I just he just kind of finds, finds himself there and does really well there. Next up, we have Vale and 
I've seen people place Vale in S tier, and I'll just say off the bat, while I disagree with that, um, Vale's not a bad unit per se, but one of the big problems Vale faces is she joins very late, but she does benefit from her battle style. Being a dragon, being able to synergize super well with literally every emblem because they really work well on her. She kind of stands out for me as more of a kind of good late game support unit. She starts off with 35 HP and 17 defense. And by that point in the game, that's going to be pretty frail. And usually she can get close to one shot or even doubled by some unit despite her 23 base speed. If you have a generally fast enemy, he'll double her sometimes, depending on the tome she's using. If she's using Obscurité, of course, but if she's using Misericorde, maybe less so. Where I think Vale shines, as I said earlier, she's more of a, to me, a late game supporty unit, is for two factors. She can use daggers, which allow her to poison the enemy, weakening, weakening them for you, and with her fell protection skill, her personal skill, which allows her to give plus one damage and plus three defense to units that are adjacent to her. So she has really good adjacency bonus. And if you pair that up, what I usually do is I get Corrin's Draconic Hex on her. So using the dagger, you can start reducing enemies defense and the survivability chipping them down for other units that's where i think veil does shine and why i usually use her i don't think she's s tier but i think her really good class skill or her really good supporty kind of unit like kind of late game addition will make her really good she will sometimes usually be behind in terms of damage in terms of magic damage to your other sages that you've been building up but uh, she'll find herself with Mavier in hate in A tier. I think she's just really good all around. She usually finds that self, herself in one of those, you know, late game spots that I did talk about with Mavier earlier. And she usually performs well as kind of like this kind of backline supporting unit that will just kind of allow other units to shine, weakening them the way you should using probably like a El Thunder or Thoron to get that range drop them down with um the draconic hex and do really good with it so i think veil kind of finds herself in that specific tier and yeah she she's she good good unit good good little good little fell dragon next up we have unaka and unaka is also a unit i've seen in s but i feel i've seen her more in s tier when you were talking about hard mode because her and corin together in hard mode with like really good you know if she gets a few levels in strength We'll make her a crit machine that's just going to destroy everybody because of her personal skill. Train to kill will allow her to have plus 15 on her crit chance when she's, you know, in fog and such. So I think Yunaka does have that mix of being a really dot good dot chank and be able to dish out some really good crit damage. She does very good early on until a certain point where she starts falling off a little bit, I found in Maddening. So she has a really good arc early on, mid game doing better, but once you get in the later stages, if you if she's had a few maps where she sat or hasn't had all the investments in the world, sometimes she'll just straight up fall off for me and I can't use her beyond a certain point. But I think that she does really good work in the early game to get you to maybe better units. Um, so I think she will also be in top tier, I think below Veil. Vale um and below mavier of course uh but her early game's really good her mid game is good her late game sometimes suffers and she can't really reclass that well she can don't get me wrong i think most units can work in a different class but because of her skill and like one of the main build i've seen out of her that i've tested is the corn one and it's really good i've tried her in other classes maybe not as proficient but still okay so i think a tier is a pretty good spot for her but late game she might be replaced by either mavier or veil vale. if you have not been training yunaka that much if you've been skipping a few maps there it can happen all right linden for me is a weird unit i've seen really cool builds i've never been able to execute i know his personal skill is very neat it allows him to get plus 20 crit if his weapon rank is lower than the enemy. So if a killer actually, I believe, is a D rank or a C rank, you know, if you reclass him into a Berserker, you can do some really neat little cheeky builds. I've seen them happen. I did try to run him in one of my saves as kind of like a mage. It was okay, but overall, my other sages were usually better by the point he joined. And in the cheeky Berserker crit build, it was nice. It was okay, but he just usually 
fell off. He joins at a point in the game where you usually have to get your team pretty figured out. And even if you set him in there, he's going to be a little bit less strong than some of the enemies. He's going to take a little bit more. Not necessarily to catch up, but to be to be decent. Um, so I'm just going to put him in... I'm hesitating between mid and bad. I'm going to put him in... Just bad. I'm going to put him in... I, you know, I'll be honest. The build seems to work, but I think it's better on like hard mode. It, it, when you play it on maddening, it, it kind of has a less high ceiling. It, it looks fun. I should probably do another playthrough where I really hamper down using Linden, but so far with what I've done with him, yeah, I'm not convinced. I think he's just kind of like one of the, not the worst, he's got a cheeky build, but one of the bad, were less than stellar units in the game. Next up we have Gold Mary, and Gold Mary, I've had kind of differing experiences with her. I think she can be pretty good. Um, she's not going to be one of your best units for sure. But I think she does have some pretty good qualities. Her 55 base defense growth is huge, making her a fun tank. Her starting out as a hero and having, by the way, the only good hero design in the game. I gotta say, the, for other characters, it's horrendous. But because she has her, you know, unique personal design, it looks better. Uh, so that just gets points in my books. But, you know, <laughs> jokes aside... Um, you know, if we would be rating on how creepy they are with the Divine Dragon, she'd probably be S tier because some of those supports are really awkward, man. I'll whisper in your ear this time. Has your lunch with me today brought you any feelings of contentment? But in terms of her as a unit, Disarming Psy can be pretty good as a personal skill. She does function well as a hero in her base class. Can really function well with good defensive rings such as Ikes and maybe uh, sometimes from the DLC it, Hector, even Sigurd to a certain extent. She'll do good, but I think her other growths aren't that fantastic. They're okay at best, but where she really, really, really does shine is at 55% defense. The rest all hovering around 25, 30% in strength. So. You know, pretty mediocre to average stuff there, but if you put her, you know, chain attacks are really good in this game, so just keeping her as like an extra chain attack user just to chain a million fucking times can be really fun. But, you know, you can also always reclass her to, a, to another class, but I think because she joins a little later than Amber, I'll put her in mid. I'm sure there's really good Gold Mary builds out there, but I think Amber, the one thing he has over her, because Amber's kind of the same, kind of more of a one-trick pony. His growths are a little bit better than Gold Mary, but his base stats are worse. I think um, Amber joins a little earlier, allowing him a little bit more room to grow and become one of your main party units. While Gold Mary, I think most of the time for me, she kind of falls in that slot of, oh, I need an extra tank. Oh, I've only been running with Louis as a tank. I need somebody else to pick up the slack there. Okay, well, I ha I just picked up this unit. She's starting off with oh, pretty good bases um, from when you, when you get her, and I can make her into kind of a defensive stalwart if I need to. Next up is Saphir, and Saphir is... I've used her in one of my playthroughs up until the end, until the final boss, and I gotta say... She kind of surprised me. She was by far not one of my better units. So it was more of a filler unit because I wasn't caring too much about keeping everybody alive. And I think I lost one of my good units. So I needed to just fill them in a spot. And Saphir did perform better than Linden in that particular playthrough. Um, she does have some really interesting ways to play with her warrior class. If pairing up Merciless and Wilt to win. Her class and her personal skill. Which if somebody's broken and with low HP... You get the higher hit chance and the higher damage. So it can be really kind of nice to make up for probably some of the bad growths she has. Uh, which will probably make her not stand out. But can act as an, you know, extra body if you need her to be that. But she wasn't really one of my carries. She's worse than Gold Mary for sure in my book. Better than Linden. I think I'll put her low C because... She can feel that like late. She doesn't want to lay just like Linden, but she can usually fill in that late game spot where you're like, ah, I might need an extra unit if somebody died. That's important. Uh, she does start at level seven with 24 strength, 51 HP, 23 dexterity, and 15 build and 19 defense. So it, there's something to do with Saphir. Can be used, can feel a niche role. 
I don't hate Saphir that much. Rosado is a unit that I've had a lot of experience with. I've used him in multiple playthroughs. And the one thing that stands out every time with this fucking character is how much you think he's going to be great. And he ends up just, you know, when he arrives, he's okay. He has good growths, good, good overall. But like, he always falls a little short. I can never get him to be uh that good he always kind of ends up taking a spot in my party but never is the star he's just kind of an extra body there to, to to dish him extra damage out because he has a high movement i've liked rosado like i've tried to use him a lot haven't really like he's not unsalvageable he has good growths good bases you can get him somewhere but i always feel like he falls a little short on damage he has good decks and good speed i don't know if it's maybe the inaccuracy of axes there's just something that makes him kind of fall off because his growths are really good. He should be better, but I haven't had a great experience with Rosado personally. Even the two times I've used him, haven't had the best experience. I still think he was better than Gold Mary, so I'll put him above Gold Mary. But Rosado hasn't been it for me, man. Next up, we have Hortensia. Hortensia is a fun character because Hortensia as a combat unit, it's kind of not the best i haven't had her be the best for me but in terms of her as a support unit she really does outpace all the other units in the game she's by far the best healer using world tree and big personality together the extra range be able to save gold unmaddening by not using up a staff use all of it is just so good she works super well with makaya just like emphasizes how good hortensia is as a healer, I'm gonna put Hortensia as an S in the GOATS tier. I really do think she shows up there in all her glory. He really is probably the best healer in the game. Outclasses everybody else. Has the better movement, has the range, has the utility. Really good healing. It can be done with Hortensia. Maybe not like raw like numbers, but she can do a lot more than probably most of the other units. So Panette is fucking insane she, no jokes aside she is probably one of my favorite characters in the game uh a character with insane strength of 25 really good strength growth really good dex growth maybe her speed lacks a little bit but she can be an insane crit machine with the correct builds she has a deep HP pool to use to trigger Blood Fury plus the Berserker's skill it, it, it's it's easy to make a very a couple of really good you know crit builds with panette i've managed to get her to 100 percent crit it's doable it works it's not that hard and she does a really good job with those builds she'll just do insane damage however there's one little caveat to those builds they do require you to usually invest in a lot of different skill for her so you need the sp to be able to execute them it can take a while but if she has that she's a bomb it just she's a nuke you nuke that you send out on somebody when you want to one tap them and she does really good work she just requires the investment and so i'm going to put her at the bottom of s tier because she does require a little bit of that of that sp investment to get there but i really do think she's one of the better units of the game next up we have ivy and i usually find myself using ivy in pretty much all of my teams i think it's she's a good character grasping void just does so much work sometimes really another great user of draconic hex for me the one thing with ivy i will say that's a major downside is the hit rate in maddening on the later maps sometimes or hit she has a hard time hitting 100 percent Sometimes her hit rate will be a little bit lower and even her speed sometimes, but her damage is just really good. She also plays extremely well with Cantor that can go and help her play off of those weaknesses of, you know, don't want, not really wanting to get hit. She doesn't really want to get hit. So, you know, you use an attack and you back out behind your front line. She does play very often that way. I think she's a good unit for that. I will not put her in S tier because I really have been burned by her missing crucial attacks. And I think a lot of players who have played a lot of IV have had the same problem. But she's at the top of A tier. I think I, it's hard for me to build an engaged team and not put IV on it. But I will say that she does have that flaw that the hit rate for me it's the hit rate sometimes getting doubled by some of the faster units kind of like veiled we talked about earlier 
and only B rank in staves, which is okay. It's pretty good, but you know, I would have liked an A. So I'll be honest, Zelkov is one of those units that to my own dismay, I've used probably the least. I do, however, think from the little bit I've used him that he's really good. He can sometimes be a good replacement for Yunaka uh, if she hasn't been invested in or if she's just like not doing her best. Um, you can sometimes just slaughter Zalkov in the moment you get him. You get him at the same time as Kagetsu, so quite early in the game. And he has some pretty decent growth across the board. I think Zelkov just falls into your good unit category. Uh, I don't have enough experience to say that I think he's the best or whatever. I think he could find himself, you know, if I redo another updated tier list, I could easily see Zelkov go up. Same thing with Gold Mary, by the way. I could see her go up with more playthroughs and stuff. Rosado, I don't see. But I could see some of the units go up a little bit, but it's going to depend on the performance. Zelkov, I think, is a good unit. He's a good replacement for Yunaka and works really well in that Thief class and can, you know, do some good crits, some good speed decks. Maybe sometimes needs a little bit of love on the strength side of things. And Not Quite is a pretty good skill. Allows him a little bit more survivability, a little bit more dodge tankiness, if you will. Next up, we have Anna. Anna is, oh my god, Anna is one of those two, one of the two most interesting units in the game in terms of performance in my opinion not let, let's not even talk about our unit performance as a combat unit but just as a kind of a support unit her skill make a killing every time she gets a kill depending on her luck she has a chance to get 500 gold and it allows you to farm in maddening some really nice amounts of, of money it's more limited and anna allows you to kind of counterbalance for that from a growth standpoint, Anna is kind of disgusting in magic, dexterity, and speed where she has 50% in all three. But her starting class is Axe Fighter with a 15% strength growth. So Anna doesn't start in the best class. Anna starts in probably one of her worst class. I did make her work as a warrior, must I say, in one of my playthroughs. She does really well with Great and Bow. But one of my best units in one of my playthroughs was Anna who I reclassed as a mage, as a sage, actually. With the right investment, if Anna is one of those units, you're like, okay, this is going to be one of my investment units in this game, one of my you know, units I'm going to take, grab as early as I can and put as much time into making good, Anna can be really good at that. She just doesn't start out as an easy way to get there because you do have to use a second seal, which are very valuable early on together there, but it can be a good investment of your time which is why I'm going to put Anna in the really good tier just below Ivy. I think Anna, if she started as a mage, would be S tier. Straight up, just be S tier. Uh, just the fact that you have to do some finagling to get her to be one of the best units, I think just needs her to put A tier. It's a little bit more time and investment. So Anna, that's, that's my thought process here, actually. Next up, we have Citrine. I really do like Citrine. She's also one, she's one of my favorite units in this game with Panette. Really good magic growth with 40%, lower dexterity and speed growth, but she usually makes up for it by blasting fools into non-existence. Her skill generosity can be very useful early on where you're probably going to find yourself using more vulnerabilities as you guys have a little bit less healers or potent healers. I've actually used her a lot on the Tiki Paralog to heal multiple people when there's a bunch of reinforcements using healing items. She can be really good for that. She has some really good early on utility. She's kind of very decent throughout the entire game, I'd say. And is, in my opinion, behind Anna and Ivy, probably the third best magic user. i even say she might be the second behind Anna. I think that she's outpaced my Ivy more than once. But she has 15 base magic. She has good magic growth. She's a really good, like, kind of like all-in glass cannon mage. Kind of like Ivy, but with less mobility. So I really like her, but I'm going to put her at the top of B tier. I think you have better options. You know, actually what? Bottom of A tier. I think she's a little bit better than what I'm going to be putting in A tier. So I'm going to put her in B tier. I'm going to put her at the bottom of A tier. I think she's really good. She, she does have that like really niche. She can't really reclass because um, she really just does one thing and it's magic damage. That's what Citrine does, magic damage. So I think bottom of A tier is pretty good. Because B tier, I think it's a little low for her. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of A tier. Maybe that's some of my bias shown through. But yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. 
So Ocarus is a unit that I've had perform at the top of their game and at the bottom of their game. I've had very varying experience with Ocarus. However, while his growth and strength at 30% is an awesome, 40 dex and 45 speed is pretty good. I'd say that Alchris's true strength, don't lie in his growth or his base stats or anything like that, but in his skills. The get behind me personal skill allows him to give more strength to the unit around him, helping him both be a damage and a support unit. While Luna is probably one of the best kind of skills in the game, gets through a lot of enemies quickly. He can also be a very good unit for Tiki's recruitment chapter. I think Alchris has some really good moments in engage. He's probably one of the he's probably one of the better bow unit to use because of Luna, which is a very good skill. And it triggers off of dexterity, which he has in spades. So I think all Chris is really good, but he does have the flaws of the bow units. You do have the mini bow in this game that allows you to counterattack not at range, but Usually you'll be on a bow that is a range bow, a more than one range bow. So he'll get, he won't be able to counterattack, which is one of the inherent flaws, but his damage to flyers is really good. So there, there, there is a little bit of, of things with Ocarus. The one thing I'll say is a lot, well, not, not a, well, yeah, there's a good portion of bosses that are flying in this game, but in Maddening, there is a skill on all bosses that stops them from being hit by super effective damage. Which means that Alcris kind of suffers a little bit from that. Uh, Archers are a little bit better in hard mode than they are in maddening because of that. Because of that one little skill. So I'll put him at the top of B tier. I think he's a really good unit. I think Luna is really good. But he does suffer from maddening shenanigans. He just, it's not the right mode for him. I think Alcris is pretty good. Uh, I, I think the, the problem is I think no bow unit will get above that. At least no pure bow unit will get above that. And Alcris is kind of stuck to being a bow unit because you don't want to reclass him outside of Tsirar Delit, which is his personal unique class because he's a lord. He kind of loses the Luna utility, so he's kind of stuck in B. And yes, we'll get to talking about Etier, but not when we get there. We'll talk about Etier when we get there. Also, I'll say Alcris probably turns out to be a better bow user than Etier, just generally speaking. Let's talk about Jade here, and Jade is a unit I am so unimpressed with in every playthrough I've had. But she does face a very, very unique problem, and that's having to go up against Louis, which any unit would hate, just by virtue of her class. She can be reclassed and used in other cases, because her growths aren't, while not being fantastic, they're okay with the class growth added upon them. They can turn out to be pretty good. Her 540 base defense is really nice to have an extra little boon in any class. You know, having a little bit more defense is always good. But just by virtue of her having to compete with a Louis that by the time you get Jade, is, if you're using Louis, it's probably up there as one of your better units. But I think Jade is okay. Meditation, while not being bad, getting plus two res if you wait, allows her to be a little bit more of a fun mage killer if placed in the right class. Let's say like a Griffin Rider or something like that could be an interesting pivot for her. But unfortunately, I don't think she's that good. I'm going to put her in bad above Linden. I don't think she's trashed. There's something to do with it. But usually she's not going to see much, much of the field in my opinion. Next up, we have Diamant, who is a fun defensive unit. He's probably found his way on all my party, much like Ivy. But unlike Ivy, he never is one of my main carries. I think he usually kind of wiggles a spot in there because I have a slot open. He gets the virtue of being a backup unit, which is always great. He synergizes very well with really good defensive ring like Ike, even Roy, and I've had recently some lots of fun using him with Hector. So he can be pretty good. The one thing I'll say is he's, he's always kind of average throughout the game. Never the best, never the worst. He just does kind of his thing. Soul is also a very good class skill for his successor class. And Fair Fight helps him out with his not the best, best dexterity i'd say so i think diamant can find himself usually in most of your teams but usually by the end of the game he's kind of relegated to using whatever ring he's using and used as a backup unit 
and he kind of loses a little bit of his potency even defensively usually outpaced by somebody else i think diamant finds himself with his brother here in b tier i think he's a good unit but i don't think he breaks any mold goes crazy does something bonkers i think he's just kind of there as a good unit and also a lot of those lord slash royalty characters in fire emblem engage kind of find themselves locked to their class not necessarily you can always reclass them in something else but usually their upgraded class has a really good skill attached to it that's like i kind of can't give up on that if i'm going to be using that unit so they get a little bit less flexibility which sometimes as you, we've seen with all chris will make them fall a little bit in the tier list because they're kind of just locked to that build because it wouldn't make a lot of sense to put diamant as like a berserker or whatever he'll do good as his successor class next up there's pandreo and i'll say with this character at first i really did not like him the first time i played around and then i tried reclassing him and he as a sage and because of his really good dex and speed growth paired with 30 percent magic plus the sage magic growth he ended up becoming one of my better like magic units uh had a lot of fun with fun with pandreo is initial high priest class while being nice with the s rank staff uh working really well for him i did have one playthrough with him as a high priest that did pretty okay um down the line but usually when i reclass him as a sage he became a monster i think sage is just good because mavier also becomes a monster as a sage i think magic's just good man i think maybe maybe we, i'd have to analyze this further but pandreo will find himself in the top tier uh, above Mavier and uh, and Valen, these guys, because the one thing with these guys is Yunaka will sometimes fall off. She's just really useful early, early on, and then the mid game, and when the late game comes around, she'll fall off. Pan Pandreo is just good all around. You just need to reclass him. While that's why he's not in the Goats tier. You need to spend some resources on him getting him there. He's not like right out of the box the best. You have to do a little bit of finagling, but even then, he's really good. Uh, kind of like Anna. You know, but he requires less. So may maybe I'll put him above Anna. Just because I think he requires a little bit less finagling. Because it's just one second seal. Anna, you have to level her up. And, and, and deal with like a bad unit for a little bit. And then get her good. Pandreo is not bad out the box. He, he comes in really good with 22 res. Does his thing. And then you can switch him. Next up, we have Lapis. And Lapis is a unit I really wanted to like when I first played this game. And... In my first playthrough, she did okay. I even reclassed as a paladin. She did pretty good. Uh, getting the extra movement helped her out. But just because she's compared so much to Kigetsu, kind of like Jade, she suffers a lot. She does arrive earlier than Jade and has a lot better reclassing option due to her base 55 speed growth. Allowing her to make maybe a class that doesn't have a great speed growth, just a little bit better, such as a Wyvern Knight maybe, or something like that, where she can shine a little bit more. But I will say in her main class, maybe as a hero, she can shine and be a little bit better. But as a sword fighter and and, and sword master, I think she just falls off so much to, to Kigetsu that she just loses a, lot, loses a lot of her shine. And even then, when you long, run her long term, she doesn't really become a centerpiece of your team. She's just like one of those extra backup units that's going to do that extra damage. And on top of that, share spoils is not one of my favorite skills. It comes with the downside of crit. And sometimes on enemy phase, depending on the character she's going to be beside, we'll want some crit despite the avoid and hit being good. I'm not a big fan of share spoils. I'll put her at the bottom of the mid tier. I think she's a little bit better than bad, but she she's never going to stand out. Sea Doll, unsurprisingly, is a dancer in this game, so he's going to be good. He'll just, he's just... I'm putting him in goats. Um... Back in the day when I was a fledgling Fire Emblem player, I did not like Seedol. I Well, not Seedol. Dancers. I was not a fan of Dancers. Um, because I was a dumb kid and the only thing that mattered to me was make doing damage. Much like every five-year-old running just damage moves on their Pokemon. The rest, other than damage, doesn't matter. Well, you know what? In Fire Emblem, Dancers and Supports are really good. And in this game, well, first of all, Seedol can synchronize off a lot of different rings. But where he shines is because of Special Dance, which is his class skill that he unlocks at level 25. It allows him to get, whenever he dances somebody, to get plus three dex speed and locks. So he gets an additional bonus 
to dancing. And on top of that, because by virtue of Byleth being in this game, if you put Byleth's ring on somebody else, you can refresh him and make him t dance two characters in one turn, which is even more value. So Sadal just, first of all, is a dancer, so pretty good, but he does get the additional love that Fire Emblem Engage's mechanic can provide him. Next up, we have Jean, and Jean is such an annoying unit to rank because he has some of the best potential because of his personal skills, and if you pair him up with Tiki, it even amplifies that, so it makes him even better in growths. He does start in a bad class because Marshall Monk doesn't have the best growth, but he has pretty okay growths just based. They're, they're not the best at first value, but because of his skill and if you even add Tiki on top of him, it just exponentially makes him to have crazy growths. Because all his growths are around the same, it's just good speed, good dex, strength and magic at 20% each, so you can go into magical class or physical class, whichever is preferred. Jean can be pretty much anything he wants. And when you'll be that thing, you'll be good at that thing. The thing is, it does require some investment to get him there. It requires usually to reclass him because you personally, I've never loved him in any of his supposed promotion of High Priest or Martial Monk. I prefer him in anything else. I ran him as a Griffin Knight last time using Erica or even using a, a Hurricane Axe that was upgraded and he was just doing monstrous thing being one of my best units in that entire run so jean has the potential to go from anywhere in this run uh in the in this list but i'm tempted to put him at top tier because if you're looking to invest of course you'll invest in either in my opinion anna or him you probably won't be doing both it's one or the other if if anna finds herself there jean finds himself there also by virtue of being too units that require investment and reclassing to make work. I think they are really good. Next up, we have Clan, and Clan is like Anna, one of those units I was saying is kind of one of the most interesting one because much like Anna, Clan is not in the right class. See, Clan starts off as a mage, but has 10% magic growth, and on the other, other hand, has 35% strength growth. He also has 50% speed growth and 40% dex so his growths overall are pretty good unless you keep him as a mage he is one of your first units you gain in the game so his bases are going to be crap but you do have the opportunity to invest in him over the long run but if you keep him as a mage he's not going to perform he's going to be one of the worst mages in the game every single other magic user in the game will perform him better unless you try to get eta to be a mage for some reason with that zero percent magic growth but you know you wouldn't do that <laughs> But despite that, usually you'll get outpaced by other units because Engage works really weirdly with recruitment. The new units always seem to be like always a little bit better than your old units and usually will sometimes take their place. So the later in the game the unit comes, usually the better it is. It's, it's weird. You don't really have, uh, it feels like sometimes your earlier unit will generally just get outpaced and forgotten for the most part. And Clan has a weird skill. Verdant Faith is good it does grant him and the divine dragon plus 10 hit during combat if both of them are adjacent but he's he needs to be kind of a pocket character for a leer which does reduce his his utility outside of being a pocket helper for a leer which is fine but it does put him more of an in a niche um in my latest playthrough clan was actually one of my best characters i reclassed him as a warrior and he had some insane growths all over the game, just destroyed everything because I put him in the right class. He did use one of my early second seal, which I could have used on somebody else. And one of my early master seal too, because I needed to promote him, then second seal him. So it was, it's a lot of investment you have to put into clan to make him good. Uh, I will say that clan is, is here. I think, I think his skill is one of the worst in the games, unfortunately. But I think that if you reclass him, he can be like one of the best units if you put the time to invest into him. But it just requires that time and that effort and those resources that you could put on other characters that are more ready to be there or, or even earlier on or, or will want to be there a little bit earlier on. Next up, we have Alfred. Alfred is actually a unit I, before my last playthrough, if you would have asked me, I would have put him like here, right? 
But in my last playthrough, I did something a little different. The reason I put him here is I always felt like either Amber just did a better job or any other unit just did better things. But because of his good defense, because he has pretty good growth and strength, defense and speed, even luck also. Paired with Golden Lotus, which is his promoted class's skill, which halves the damage taken. And if you pair him with like Ike, he can do some really disgusting things. My latest run had Alfred be probably my best units. I'm not going to lie. Probably one of my top three units overall. So I'm going to rank him at the top of B tier. I don't think he's a top tier. I think the reason he works in is a, in a very specific framework as a frontline unit. If you're not going to be using like Louis or other units of the kind. I think Alfred is a good unit in that. You know, he has a limited approach of things he can do, but as a good defensive frontline, he can be, he can be there. He will get outpaced by some characters you get later, unless you take the time to invest into him. But since you get him quite early in the game, you can end up doing that. And honestly, I do recommend if you never done that regular Alfred promotions, pair him up with Ike, put him on the front line. He's going to do some good stuff and, and self improver is also good. It allows him to get a little a bit extra strength, extra oomph. But uh, try try it out. It's it's a lot of fun. I really, really, really enjoyed it. All right, next up we have Boucheron. And Boucheron... <sighs> Boucheron is interesting, but like, I don't think in a good way. Boucheron needs you to use other chain attack users to help him out a lot because of his skill move to tears. That gives him plus two damage if a unit joins a chain attack, which isn't too hard given that a lot of the good classes are backup classes. But it kind of is... is counterintuitive to his class like he wants to chain attack so i guess if you use him as the last chain attacker it helps him out but prior to the dlc being released where he couldn't leverage it all the time really well early on now with the dlc using him with chrome and robin it does trigger him because robin will attack as an extra attack so there's that it helps him out a little bit but the problem i have with boucheron, boucheron other than that you know he gets a little bit better because of the dlc which is good his 20% strength growth, while 20% build growth is great, 20% strength growth is pretty bad. He's got good decks and speed. I guess because of his class, he doesn't need the high strength because the class will kind of play off of that a little bit more. But usually, Boucheron, the moment I can get somebody off my team, he falls off the team, man. And the moment he's there, he never impresses me. I be honest i never have the chance to use boucheron late in the game i think in my next playthrough i will definitely keep him as one of my focus units just to see what i can do with him but he's never impressed me usually falls off the team i'm gonna put him in bad i don't want to put him in trash because i don't think he deserves trash i think he can do something i think the dlc i think before the dlc he was there but the dlc just adds an extra little layer to him allowing him to get extra damage and all that stuff and it's very nice and very neat but now he's bad i think he's just bad bottom bad just i i haven't been able to make him work i'm gonna try to make him work at some point but i just just haven't been able man uh vander 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 never been able to make vander work outside of the early game i know he can probably work probably have some fun with him but he he's a yegan character what he does is he gets you out of the early game, acts as a good frontline early on, and then falls off the moment you can take him off your team. You do. But Vander, to me, I think I'll put him in mid just for the novelty of him being a Jaegen. He doesn't have the worst stats. He is not great growths, and you can make him a good unit using a second sale maybe later and investing a little bit into him later on to make him kind of like a filler unit. So I'm going to put him in mid because he's not hopeless <laughs> outside of the early game Marin, i've never had a bad time with Marin. i'll be 100 percent honest with you all Marin's kind of always my second kagetsu in the sense that i get her great class does great in her starting class also does great in other class i had a very disgusting martial monk Marin just for kicks and giggles and mending and she was one of my top units as that class she gets knife utility, so poison. She's just really good. Makes use of a lot of emblems very well. Knightly Escort is okay. You just need the right units around you, right right female units around you to make work. But I think Marin goes here. 
I, I think she's one of my goats. Always works for some reason. I know that might be a high placement. A lot of people say, ah, she one joins a little bit later than Gagetsu. Uh, but she has really good bases. Just like Panette, 21 speed, 21 dex. Good luck, you know, gets 50. Strength as an S rank in knives just right out the gate, and her growths, while not being the best in strength, got good growth in dex and speed. She has also the same growth in strength and magic, which allows her all the flexibility in the world to reclass to whatever the fuck she pleases. So, you can make her a magic unit if you want, it, it, it will work. I think Marin just, just, just kind of slots in there at the top in the goat tier, and it's just a really good unit. Timera, I've gone back and forth on. Timera's good. She's a good frontline defensive unit. Her strength growth is pretty low at 25. She does have really good utility because of her racket of psalm ability dropping the crit chance of people around. My five, so that helps out just the team overall, just in a general sense. She has great growths and decks with 45 and speed, and then 30% defense growth. So that's pretty good but her defense girls truly shine when she gets the picket class that gives her another 20 percent so she has some really good defense growth she's a good frontline unit good tank the deck is also great because it triggers sandstorm which is a really strong attack because they'll calculate the damage off 150 percent of her defense instead of her strength so she can just slam through folks However, you kind of have to rely on some luck for it to happen, but I've had Sandstorm just demolish people. But sometimes the low strength growth and no Sandstorm trigger kind of just relegates her as a glorified backup unit. But I'd put her at the top of good beside Alfred. Same kind of thought process. They can fit in your team. They can fit in your team. Um, they can have very niche specific roles. They probably won't be the carries, but they'll be, well, I mean, Alfred did carry for me, but that was once. A and they'll just be there and be extra good bodies to have around. I think they made the Lord units good on purpose. They probably wanted you to use those ahead of the others. So, Bunet, 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 whatever his name is, is not a unit I like. <laughs> He has a very specific niche build with Celica, where using his own personal skills, seconds, and using favorite food, he can just always refresh his engage meter a lot, or like a little, or more than once in, 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 in one, like, in a series. It can happen, it's very niche, it's very gimmicky. I don't like niche and gimmicky. Oh, I mean, I don't mind niche things. I don't like gimmicky things. Um, he he just arrives at a point in the game where you have such better units. And, and Pandreo is just so much better than him at that point. And even behind him, you'll get better units later on. He doesn't reclass that well. He doesn't do bad in reclassing. But I've tried him out in Hero. I've tried him out in Great Knight. I, I've never really found a spot for him. His bases are okay, I guess. 15 strength, 15 dex, 20 defense is like the best out of the, the whole bunch. But honestly, I'll be honest, guys. I think I think if there's one trash unit in this game, it's 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 this guy. It's not that I hate him. No, I do hate him. That's that's not I do hate him. A guilty as charged, folks. I hate Brunette. I just think like any other unit, like there's one build that I know like that I'm can think of is just just and I don't like that. It's just every time I've used them, I was like, yeah, I'd rather put that focus on literally anybody else on my team. So Bune unfortunately finds himself there. And now the main character of this game, Alir. Alir does have the great problem, much like, well, it's not a problem, but the great thing that happens to her, like Vale being a dragon type of character. All the rings are good on, on Alir. They all work well in some way, shape or form. Alir has pretty good growths and dex and speed, just pretty good growths all around to be fair, except magic. But Alir usually performs pretty well, on, you know, just, just more than not, just will perform to a more than acceptable standard, just do pretty good. Also has the chance of being the first unit available, so probably, and always being force deployed, so you're probably gonna, gonna want to invest in Alir. But the thing that makes her great makes him makes them great i should say because it's 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 you can either have a boy or a girl is that alir has the has the opposite skill of veil which gives plus three strength to adjacent unit and plus one so it does make a alir kind of a fun support ish support-esque uh kind of main character where she has good utility 
outside of being combat units. So if, like me, you made a mistake, which I did, I made a mistake, uh, and use Alir as a Mage Knight, I don't know why I did that. I wanted to try Alir as something else than, than their class. I made them a Mage Knight. It didn't go well. My Alir sucked for a full playthrough, and I kind of ruined one of my characters. Um, I could still use Draconic Hex on them, and using that, and then Cantor backing up, finding ways to drop units down to, to, to a little bit less defense and speed, and, and get them a little weaker, chip at them, and then use Alir's plus three to boost the damage of my other good units. I was able to maneuver a a, a build with Alir where even if I had a bad Alir, there was still some ut utility to this character uh, despite it all. So I think Alir finds himself at the top of A tier. I don't think they'll ever perform as good as these units up here, but Alir, Alir will do good. Alir will generally do good. I mean, actually, you know what? No, S tier. And there's one reason. When Alir becomes an emblem, she gets Bond Blast. And Bond Blast, I believe, is what it's called. So there's Dragon Blast, which is okay, but then Bond Blast absolutely demolishes and allows any unit to become just a juggernaut of damage. So I'm gonna put Alir at the bottom of S tier because I forgot the fact that probably one of the best emblems in the game in terms of that attack, Bond Blast, just, just disgusting. Uh, Dragon Blast is okay, but Bond Blast just brr, scary stuff. So Etche is an interesting character, a character I love actually, probably one of my other one of my favorites along with um, Kagetsu, Panet, Pan and Citrine. I love Etche in this game. The one problem Etche has is, well, Alcris is a better archer in most sense. She has great strength growth and pretty good strength base. She's super useful at the start to take out flyers because there are a few flyers here and there at the start that can be annoying. She does have that very interesting niche, but she does suffer from kind of a bad skill. Energize allows her to get, if she uses a vulnerability, to get plus strength or any any healing item, she'll get plus three strength or plus two strength. However, she won't counterattack that often because, well, you know, she's a ranged character, which won't allow her to use that skill super effectively, I'll be honest, until you get like a dancer to dance her to use it again or you reclass her. And in the later stages of the game, you're probably not using that often. Healing items, probably, probably got a couple of healers on hand to get, take care of that stuff, but you can always use them. So she doesn't have the best skill in the game. However, she really has good strength growth. And personally, when you pair her up with Lucina and a longbow, she becomes one of the best backup units in the game. Same thing for all, all Chris, to be fair, because it will most of the often trigger uh, on some character or another. Uh, she does double quite often. You know, 35 speed isn't the best, but if you get her in the right class, it can be pretty good. She doesn't have a lot of reclassing options outside of very physical characters, but I've done her in Berserker or Warrior and, and, and classes like that, and she does perform really well. However, I will say that even though she can reclass to perform pretty well, I'll put her in mid. She's kind of a guilty, I would say, not pleasure, but guilty character I use a lot on my teams. I usually have Etie on deck, and she usually does pretty good, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it was a little forced. But you know what? Actually, I'll put her at the bottom of B. I'll put her at the bottom of B, because uh, Klein is in B. I think they kind of work in the same fashion, and they could be replaced by pretty much anybody, but for a little bit of reclassing, they can, they can be pretty good units. Bogato next, and I'll say... I'm not a fan. I think Fogato back at you, which is his class kill, class skill in Cupido. Cupido isn't the best. When you counter, you deal extra damage, half of the damage you take, which you might not have a problem taking damage on Fogato, but if you're not yielding a sword, you're probably not countering or not that often. So it'll come in handy on enemy phase once in a while, but not that much. It's probably the worst per or one of the worst personal skills or class skills of all the Lords. He does have a really good speed growth of 55. We mu I must I must note that really good speed growth. But you know he's kind of okay. I never really want to use him. I'm always using somebody else. I even think Etk is better. People might disagree with this on with, with me on this, but I think Fogato kind of deserves to stand. I don't want to say bad. Like kind of like with Lapis, where they're all right. Got good growth. Got good stuff, but. I'd rather use anybody else. I think other characters will perform much, much better than them. Next up, we have Celine, And Celine is, again, I've been saying this a lot, but a lot of the characters here are interesting. 
Saline is kind of like a jack of all trades, kind of like a hybrid physical magical character. She'll do better as a magical character to be fair, but being able to use the Levine Sword to break is always a lot of fun. I think Saline is a good unit. Do I think she's the best unit? No, I think Citrine will do better. I think Anna will do better. I think Pandrea will do better. I think Ivy will do better. I think a lot of the mages will do better than her uh, as a mage. But I do like Saline. Have I been saying Citrine? I don't know. I do like Saline a lot. Uh, she, she, I love her design, by the way. I don't know, like a lot of hate on it, but uh, I, I think it looks great. So I think Saline is good. Uh, I think she'll be in B tier. She has a use. She can be, she can be one of your better mages late game, but you know, the other ones will probably outclass her, but I think she can do some, some pretty good work in that vein. I think kind of like the other early units, like these guys require maybe a lot more investment than a couple of the other ones up here, but can be worth it. It's just... She doesn't have like a, she, she just being the kind of hybrid of the sword and everything. I've never really used the sword. I think it's kind of just a waste on her, uh, except for the Levine sword for breaks. Then again, as I've already mentioned, but I'm not the biggest um, fan of that. But I do think she does perform pretty well more, more often than not. But then again, with all that being said, Ignis is really good. Ignis really does leverage her strength a little. So there's, there's something there, but you know, I, I think she does get outpaced, but she can stand out with Celica sometimes just be one of my better, you know, my last playthrough, she was one of my better magic units. But by the end of the, of the at the end of the day, my Ivy was just doing so much more and I, somebody else I had as a magic unit was doing much more. So Saline is good, but I think she lacks a little bit. All right, next up is Louie. And honestly, if you're not running Louie with Sigurd, what, what are you doing? What, what are you, what, what are you doing? It's, it's fucking goaded. Louis is not going to be the best magical defensive unit, but it's probably one of the best defensive unit in the game. Naturally 15% defense growth. Plus if you keep him in armor class as a general, you'll get even more. I've never really had a problem with Louis. And he's probably one of the most recommended unit to use in maddening with Kagetsu. I'm going to put him up here. He's in the top. He's, he's him and Kagetsu are throw the ball back at each other. I really like Louis. I think everybody should be using Louis. Just will do a lot of damage, can survive a lot, synergizes with a lot of really good rings. But I think him and Sigurd are the, are, are the best, one of the best combos in the game. And, you know, he just he just does just frontline things so well. Next up, we have Fram. And I won't say that Fram is bad because Fram does have a specific niche of being your early healer. She is a heal a, a unit that does shine in the early game. She is the one healer you get early on, the one kind of character you're gonna you're gonna rely on early on to heal. So she does have that niche. She can transition into late game, but you kind of probably need to reclass her into something. I haven't had a good track record with with fram even in hard mode beyond like the point where you get hortensia hortensia is going to be do better healing and getting her in another class she's kind of fallen behind at that point probably just because you've been focused on having your healer but her being a niche early game healer at least gives her a mid she's niche she just does that one little thing very well um i think she's better than those units because of that she's not better than the mass combat units they will wipe the floor of her but she does have her niche does her thing and she does it pretty well as an early game healer and finally we have chloe and it, i think it's a great unit to end on because chloe i chloe much like louis i've never had a bad chloe even in my last playthrough where i made her a mage knight i know i have the bad habit of trying to make mage knight work the only thing that works on mage knight is the little horse having a little hat it's very cute it's awesome but Eh, you always end up just using magic all the time. Just make them a sage. It's, it's gonna be better. <laughs> I don't know why it was really one mage knight. I don't know. Anyways, um, moving along. She worked really well. She was starting to be one of my better units. She outpaced Celine in my last playthrough, even though she wasn't like she wasn't as a mage knight. But overall, Chloe does really well in that magical role, even not in the magical role, even the physical role in her base class as a Griffin Knight does awesome. She really just works well in any class. She really pairs well with Micaiah, uh, not with Micaiah, with, um, with Erica, even Sigurd, just damage units. She does really well with them. I think she's one of the better units in the game. I think kind of like Marin, she does have her downfall, less defense, will get killed by a lot of range unit, but I think she does super well. 
And now that I'm observing this playlist, I think I'll do is do one little adjustment. I'll bring Yunaka to the top of the good. I, while I think Yunaka is really good, I think the fact how hard she falls off late game does make me want to bring her down a little bit. I will move Jean and Anna to the bottom of A tier, not because I think they're bad, uh, but because I think the kind of investment you have to put in them versus some of these other units ahead of them is a lot higher. They have the potential to be some of the best units in the game, but I think that I'm gonna bring them down a bit because the other units just perform better than them out of the gate, uh, require a little bit less finagling to get, to get good. So I think we're going to bring them down a little bit just because they, they require that little bit more malleability to, to function in their best possible way. I'm also going to bring down Lapis to bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lapis fans. I really want to like Lapis. I'm going to bring her down to bad simply because I think Lapis just, that, man, it just doesn't work, man. <laughs> she, th th there's no reason you'd pick her above a lot of the units above her. At least these two have a niche early game. They do some stuff early game. They do fall off really hard, but at least they do something at some point in the game. I don't think Lapis, even on her join chapter, she won't do much. I guess she's going to be a better backup than Boucheron because at that point, you're probably not using Boucheron anymore, but maybe you still are. I don't know. So it's 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 pretty tenuous here, and I'm going to bring Boucheron down to trash. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I thought about it again. The point I made earlier about the DLC emblem of Krom helping him out it's so niche it's so kind of like how it works with Bunet. i think it's too gimmicky it just requires just too many things well not too many things it's a little bit easier to pull off than Bunet, a little bit more consistent than Bunet. but i just still think it's not a great character but then again i think next playthrough i do i should use like everything below c tier except maybe he rosado because i've used rosado a ton um i should be using everything below c tier make me suffer no, nothing in s tier <laughs> that could be fun but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a non s and a tier uh fire emblem engage playthrough that could be interesting except for earlier i guess but that could be interesting let me know in the comments but with that being said that's the tier list that's the whole thing i'm not touching it anymore that's the tier list a lot of units and good and above and that's because i truly think that this game is probably one of the best balance overall even the units that are in mid bad and well maybe not these guys but <laughs> mid and bad have redeeming qualities that make them can be used so let me know what you thought about this playlist down in the comments below i think it's a lot more accurate than my original uh, tier list so let me know then check out the join button down below helps out the channel a lot and support me and on my journey to make this my full-time endeavor and while we're on the subject of membership i'd like to give a huge shout out to my tier two members brawler four five six clutch mcgee and forgotten fox thank you you three for your support and to all the other members of course and uh leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this or if you agree with at least one of my choices if you agree with one of the choices drop a like and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thank you all for watching this really long tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.